Hey y'all, this is video number two of the night, How to Get Away with Murder, um, season two, episode three, um, it's called Octopus, okay, this episode, and I skip around, the episode opens up with Annalise, um, talking to a recorder, but, I mean, she's getting drunk and drinking, but she's actually, okay, um, she's talking the recorder um you know going over information of the case of the brother and the sister okay and she stumbles up the steps <laughs> yeah she finally makes up the steps and she just passes out on the bed and she's pretty much like damn this snoring and all of a sudden she hears a loud noise and she jump up okay she goes downstairs. She's like, oh, I got a gun. She ain't got a damn gun. She got a vase. She go downstairs and she look and she's like, gas, it's a rat. And I put in my um my little notes, why well, I thought a rat was um Nate. I thought Nate had um, broken her house. Okay, now I'll skip around. First of all, Bunny and Asher... Out here for that because Asher, like Bunny, just look old for some reason to me. Awkward. Um, Frank and Laurel. I mean, Frank is older. Frank, fine, y'all. God damn, I said that the other day. Like, hmm, Frank is fine, but Frank, he's. I mean, he's older than Laurel, clearly you could tell, but I don't know, like, it's just something about Asher and Bonnie that just don't sit right with me. Okay, the case, because you know there's always a case, the main case this episode is a lady who, that's the lady that played on um, uh, The Bodyguard too, I think. That's the, the, the lady that was Whitney Houston's sister, the one who was jealous of her. And hired the hitman um to kill her. But um pretty sorry y'all, uh, my phone tripping. Um but they uh I think that's that lady. Okay, well, pretty much she was having sex. They had like a little sex club type deal. And a man died while her and the man was having sex. Okay. Which, y'all, this episode is so good. For a number of reasons. And I'm going to talk about it. Okay, so all this, you know, all this sex stuff is coming out during the trial and, and all this here stuff. And they're pretty much trying to help the lady. I mean, we all know that Annalise don't lose cases. So, they're pretty much trying to help the lady by getting people that was there to tell, you know, tell what happened and testify. And everybody's like, no. Now, some of the stuff that they were talking about is actually true. There is a such thing as um, Tantra and Tantric sex. So, that is very true. Um, I've done like papers and I've researched stuff like that. Um, actually Tantra, so that's true. Um, cause one of the ladies was like, she had an eight hour orgasm. Um, now I don't know about eight hours, but, but anyway, so in the process, you know, there's all the guys, uh, well, everybody, you know, Asher, Laurel, um, Michaela, all of them, they're having to go out and interview people. So, of course, you know, these are all people that are part of the sex club. So, later on that night, they're pretty much just talking about everything that they have. Um, talking about everything that they, you know, the people told them. And they're, you know, talking about their own personal sex lives. And it comes out that Michaela has never had an orgasm. That the dude that she was engaged to did not perform oral sex. And she was like, yeah, I should know he was gay. We in 2015, okay, and like I always say, if you watch my video, hopefully you are grown. But I'm just going to be very honest. 
Because she was like, yeah, she knew he was gay. At this point, if, if you are in a heterosexual relationship and your man, if you're a woman and your man is not giving you oral sex or if you are a man and your lady is not giving you oral sex, something wrong. Somebody ain't telling the truth somewhere. I mean, that's one of the things that I liked about this episode. I mean, we are... We are in 2015, like I said. And y'all, I'm just going to talk just for a minute. I'm just going to be honest. I don't understand why nowadays there's still so much sex shaming, really. Because pretty much, like, when they were talk talking to all the people that was at the party, they was all like, the people was like, uh-uh. Nope, I ain't going to tell y'all what I do behind closed doors. And it seemed like, now, I mean, it seemed like we still in there as a society. Like, you have to be so shamed so embarrassed about what you do behind closed doors which to me kind of blows me because hell everybody want to be standing your truth and da -da -da -da, and oh you supposed to excel if this person if somebody want to change and if it's a man he want to be a woman or a woman want to be a man like it seems like people are trying to be so accepting of some stuff but it just still seems like there's a lot of sex shaming, like, with heterosexual people. It, I mean, honestly, that's, it, that was the underlying, to me, that was one of the underlying messages in the episode. Like, if you heterosexual, you know, you're a straight person, and you like to get down and dirty, or you like to do your do, or... You like to, you, you're a swinger or something like that. Something that's just dealing with some, you're not bisexual, you're not gay. You know, you just like to have sex. Something is all of a sudden wrong with you. But now, oh no, if you gay, it's okay. Like, yeah, y'all, I just, I don't know. That was kind of like, I just feel like that's kind of with a society where we going, like, is something wrong with somebody that's just a straight person that has sex? I mean, because honestly, I'm just being honest. I know, I know a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I was told recently. I'm not going to say what it was, but it was so funny. Trust me, I know a lot of married couples. <laughs> and... People do interesting stuff behind their bed, you know, behind closed doors. You know, I'll just leave it at that. And, you know, everything ain't for everybody. You know, but people do interesting stuff. Okay. Like I said, Michaela has never had an orgasm. Okay. We see the brother. Excuse me, y'all. We see the brother and the sister. There is a picture of them. It looks like they're kissing or about to kiss. Which, I mean, we know they're adopted, but, you know, so they're not blood. But, hell, y'all was brought up together. I mean, y'all was brought up together, so y'all brother and sister in my eye. Now, they say that, no, they they say no. They, they've never had those kind of thoughts. They're brother and sister. They would never do no kind of incest shit. Uh-uh. Y'all know what? I don't think the brother and sister did it. I don't. I'm going to say it now. I do not think the brother and sister killed the parents. I don't think they have no kind of incest relationship. I And I have said this. I know we just in episode three. But I have said this before. And I'm going to keep saying it until I'm proven wrong. I believe this is them. The people that work there. The staff. Maybe even that head, uh, the, the head lady, the one who's like, you know the stuff when it's wrong. Like, you know the stuff when it's not right. And I've known them their whole lives. Like, honestly, I believe that, yeah, I believe she had something to do with it, y'all. I just, I don't. How to get away with murder is too complicated. It's never who we think. If you think about it, 
go back to last season with the, the uh, Lila, that was her name, the cheerleader, the one who Frank was sleeping with. I wouldn't have never, until they showed, not Frank, uh, Sam, until they showed me that it was Frank that killed her, I would have never damn knew that. Hell, Rebecca, until they showed me that it was Bunny that killed Rebecca, I would not have ever guessed that Bunny killed Rebecca, Rebecca or that Frank killed Lila. How to get away with murder, they don't, it don't be the people that you think. It don't. It be somebody you least expect. And it's too easy for us to already see the brother and the sister and they're already on trial. I just don't feel like it's them. Y'all, I could be totally damn wrong, but I don't. I don't feel like it's them. Okay. We later find out, go backwards, that night that, you know, when it starts, the Annalise is drunk and she hears what she thinks a rat. Come to find out, it wasn't no rat. Which y'all, I ain't gonna lie, when 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 they showed it was a damn rat, I'm like, I thought it was gonna be a cat or something. Because it was shit that was falling over and stuff getting knocked over. Y'all, when, when do a rat, how can a rat, a little old bitty rat, how can a rat do that? Side out of TV. Well, we find it wasn't a rat. And it wasn't Nate who I thought it was. Hell, I thought it was Nate. It wasn't Nate. It was... Asher. Asher broke into Annalise's house because he's working for the prosecutor. The one who's going to be dead to the damn pavement um, when Annalise gets shot. But he's working with her. She's pretty much blackmailing him. Um, which at the end, I'm going to skip. At the end, we see him go, him go to his dad and he's like, I need to talk to you. And because uh, we know some from last season that Asher and his dad ain't on good terms no more. Because Asher found out that his dad, you know, sent that man to jail. Um, you know, he knew that man didn't do nothing. So they ain't on good terms no more. Well, Asher's like, I'm in trouble. It's about Tiffany. And that's the whoever late that the, the lady, the prosecutor keep telling him, oh, well, I'm going to use this against you. So I want to know who this is. Who is this person? Y'all, am I the only person who thought that, I'm skipping, I'm backing up a little bit, when Michaela and um, Connor, when they went to that sex party, am I the only one who thought that Michaela was going to have her first orgasm from a woman, like her first orgasm ever was going to be for, from a woman, because y'all, Michaela was feeling it. Um, come to find out that the guy that Michaela is talking to that he's, you know, dating or whatever. I didn't catch his name. That's Rebecca's half foster brother. That's her foster br brother. And also come to find out that Eggs is Rebecca. Rebecca's nickname is Eggs because when they were in foster care together, she knocked over some eggs and... The foster dad made her lick him up off the floor. And so that became her, you know, how they knew each other of eggs. Um, so, and she had, a, you know, a little name for him. And pretty much, Wes figures it out. And Wes stops him before he goes to Michaela's um, house. And he's like, um, you better leave her alone or I'm going to tell her. And... He's like, look, I'm not eggs, Rebecca's eggs, and I believe she's dead because she told me that if I didn't hear nothing from her, somebody gonna kill her, and it's probably the lady you work for talking about Annalise, which we already know Annalise didn't kill her because Bunny killed her. Okay, so I'm thinking that he's just gonna go ahead and leave Michaela alone. No, nope. negative. We see Michaela. Come to the um, come in the doorway with a whole nasty piece of lingerie on, and she like, I want you to stay the night, honey. And he like, okay, and you know she ain't never get no oral sex from her fiance, so honey, that's the first thing she want him to do. She like, Psh, go ahead and get on it. So we all know that Michaela probably had her good old orgasm that night. Um, in the case of the lady, the um. The lady who was at the sex party. Come to 
find out she did kill her the man they were in love he had a wife and kids and he would not leave them but she didn't kill him on purpose she didn't know that he was taken by agra and the pill that um she gave him a pill and it has a, a bad reaction to viagra it can make you go into have make you have a heart attack well and at least pretty much flipped it and made it seem like maybe the wife had killed him you know the wife found out because hell the wife him and the wife hadn't had sex in over a year y'all know i said to hell you say when that lady said that when analysts were like what well, last time y'all had sex she's my oh it's been over a year child please <laughs> no man all the only time me and my husband yeah if it's a deployment involved that's acceptable but if it ain't no deployment or if it ain't no training where well, you not physically with me no ma'am no sir no how so of course the lady you know she's upset with Annalise because she's like you made her look bad like the wife and she was like you ripped her to shreds in front of her kids which I was saying that too like god damn Annalise is cold blooded with it like she know that her damn client accidentally killed the damn man <laughs> I say god damn Annalise so in the end um pretty much we see Annalise getting ready, okay? Cause the lady done sent a little thank you note for getting her, you know, not going to jail and oh, you know, at the last she saw Annalise, she asked her how do you sleep at night, and Annalise is like, hell, I sleep alone in some good ass sheets, cause we know that at the beginning she got an email from from the lady booth thing that she slept with, talking about the sheets was nice and you know comfortable. So the lady that the sex lady, she done sent Annalise, you know, sent the team a little thank you basket. Oh, y'all, I had, I just took Tika outside and something got me itching. Um, she sent her, you know, sent the team a thank you um, basket. And in the thank you basket, she had a, a card for Annalise. And the card had the location and time of their next sex meeting. Or whatever and she was like if you tired of you know tired of going to bed lonely you know by yourself so she in there trying to get the right outfit to make you know make a booty pop titties pop and she getting ready y'all i'm thinking she finna go get her get her some some d or, or hell in her case maybe some p2 hell here lately she go to damn nate Hobbs. And she's talking to Nate when she did get him get him a job with the police department. Um, she lied to the police chief and she wrote his damn daughter name in the book. <laughs> in the, the sex, you know, the, the list of people that's in the sex club. She wrote that man daughter name in the book. Cold blooded. Well, pretty much, you know, she's telling Nate, I miss you, blah, blah, blah. Which I'm saying to myself, where the hell his wife at? Ain't he married? Which we're going to see her on the next episode, his wife. So, instead of telling her, no, it's over, I don't want to have anything to do with you. He's like, well, I'm not going to say it's over. Um, we may be together. I just need some time. And... Lo and behold, who's standing there in his house? Wes. So pretty, I mean, pretty much at this point, Wes thinks that Annalise killed Rebecca, which is not true. Um, and also, they keep back, you know, the show keeps going back and forth. We see that Nate is there at the at the, the night Annalise gets shot. Nate is there too. Hell, seems like everybody there except for Bunny, Asher. And let's see, Bunny, Asher, and Frank. Them the only people that's not there. Everybody else there. So y'all, that's it. Um, both shows, How to Get Away with Murder and Scandal, were very good. Um, I may do a review on Empire tomorrow. I don't know. Um, but as always.